Hey guys, it's me Omar. Welcome to the channel. Welcome. If you're new, be sure to hit that subscribe button and leave a like if you've not done so yet. It does help with the YouTube algorithm and it gets our video out to more people to see. And I love to see that. I love to read your guys' comments. So, you know, hit that like button. Uh, welcome back. How are you all doing? I'm doing good. Be sure to follow my social medias. Uh, they're all linked down below. This is my third time doing this recording because I really hate the way the past three turned out. As the title suggests, today we're talking about Shanks and what little we do know about him and some possible theories that I've, you know, found online that I think myself personally about who Shanks may be, his greater um, involvement, his greater impact on the series as a whole. So we're going to start off with, you know, talking about what we do know about Shanks. So what we know about Shanks is that he is a current Yonko. He, alongside Buggy the Clown, were cabin boys of the previous Pirate King, aka Goldie Rogers crew. Uh, he and Buggy were not present at Raftal, which would lead me to believe that they did not go to Raftal, but they did go on the journey to find the Poneglyphs alongside Kazoki Odin. So we know that he knows Odin to some degree, potentially even Frankie, because I think because I know Odin did talk to Frankie when they went to Water 7 and, you know, got their boat built. So, that's kind of like what we know about his past. And the first time we ever really see him in the story is when he meets Luffy and, you know, kind of becomes a mentor, inspirational, father-type figure to Luffy, which, and gives him his straw hat. Here's what I think, okay. So, here's, I have an opinion. So, I don't think he was necessarily a big bad pirate at that time because here's why normally if you're a yonko the whole world knows you the east blue south blue north blue east blue west blue whatever blue the grand line new world they all know who you are if you are a yonko and we know for a fact that when shanks was in fuchsia village the mountain bandits that came down to get alcohol and had a argument and a, some a pseudo fight with shanks did not bat an eye when talking poorly about him. They were gloating about their pathetically low bounty at the time to a potential Yonko, which would have a bounty in the billion. So I don't think he was a Yonko at that time. In fact, I don't even think he was a relevant pirate. I think after the whole voyage with Roger, I think Shanks as well as Buggy, like, you know, laid low for a while. You know, explored, did some voyaging of their own, maybe more so Shanks and Buggy. And then at that point, Shanks, when he felt ready, he went out and amassed his own crew, which is why he was in the East Blue, um, you know, and got other members from different blues. And then officially started his pirate voyage, which would explain why no one really knew about him and the, why the mountain bandits weren't necessarily scared by him. So that's my opinion. And, you know, we... The rest is history. He saves Luffy, loses his arm, gives him his straw hat, tells him to become a great pirate, and we don't see him again until right after the Alabasta arc when we see his, you know, new recruits talking to Whitebeard and, you know, gloating about being on Shanks' crew. So we know that Shanks is a, a Yonko. So what else do we know about Shanks? Um, you know, nothing else really other than, you know, the fact that he went to freaking Marijua. No, 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 you heard that right. He went to Marijua. The land of the Celestial Dragons. Yeah, that, yeah, you know that, like, that little, like, city on top of the red line? Yeah, he went there. Where pirates aren't allowed to, you know, set foot on. And marines aren't even allowed to be there, unless specifically on a mission. And not even other, you know, nobles, different royal families of the world aren't even allowed to go in there during reverie. They're only allowed at a certain little area that's open to them. Yeah, he, Shanks went there, talked to the Gurusei... He didn't sneak in there. In fact, he was there by appointment with the Gurusei. And they didn't even bat an eye. They weren't like, oh shit, it's a Yonko in our presence. No, they were like working, you know, doing paperwork and just like, you know, not even acknowledging him while he's like, I want to talk about a pirate. So um, that leads to my theory on who I think Shanks might be and why I think he might be what he, I think he is. So because we know very little about Shanks. I can't really go into a detailed video on him as a character. What we see of him is that he's a good person, from what we see at least. Though, is he really a good person considering the fact that he seems to be somewhat buddy-buddy with the Gurusei? Does he, is he a good person? I don't know that. So, uh, personally, I think that there is more to Shanks than meets the eye. 
I do think that Shanks is not who he claims to be. In fact, I'm not saying, oh, he's not a pirate. I do think he's a pirate for sure. Um, but here's the thing. In the past, we have had Celestial Dragons, a.k.a. Don Quixote do Flamingo, you know, being a world, no, you know, being a pirate, but also having certain privileges that come with being a world noble. Um, and we do know that there's like, tw there were 20 different kings. Uh, you know, Vivi's family line was one of them, but they didn't go to Marishwa. So there was 19 kings that went to Marishwa and their descendants are the current world nobles. Uh, my theory that I personally, not my personal theory, because I'm not the one who came up with it. It's been around on the internet for a while now. Um, I personally do think that maybe Shanks might be a world noble. I think Shanks might be a celestial dragon. Because here's my here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, if you guys remember during the Marine Ford War, uh, when you know Whitebeard and the world government were fighting, Blackbeard showed up. Whitebeard lost. The uh, world government, aka the Marines, were going on a rampage to kill all the pirates. And then Shanks comes along. <clears throat> yeah, no, Shanks comes along and just, you know, ends the war single-handedly. Not only ending the war, you know, like, oh, everyone got away, he fought them off. No, he literally demanded the war to be over. And Son Goku said, yep, no, you know, you're right, you're right, buddy. You know, pal, you're right, we're going to end right now. Um, let them all go. Son, even Akainu, who hates pirates and has a, you know, I must kill everyone because that's my form of justice... Uh, mentality, you know, didn't even like argue at it. He's like, you know what? Fine, whatever. Just go, just go. It's okay. I'm, I'll be okay. So, uh, what does that mean? Um, clearly, it's not because he's just a Yonko, because we had, you know, the world government there and they were clearly, you know, had the upper hand. I doubt Blackbeard was going to stick around. So, the world government, if they really wanted to, they could definitely have defeated Shanks if they truly wanted to. Um, we don't really know whether or not. Shanks has a devil fruit. When he was introduced in the story the first time around, when he saved Luffy from the water, he was swimming, which would lead people to believe he doesn't have a devil fruit unless he got one within the span of that event and the current event. He doesn't have a devil fruit. And he we know that he has Conqueror's hockey, Armament hockey, and it's safe to assume he also has observational hockey. So nothing spectacular, nothing special. Yes, his Conqueror's hockey might be top-notch Conqueror, but Again, nothing too spectacular. Uh, if the world government truly wanted to, if the Marines really wanted to, they could definitely have defeated Shanks at that time and his little crew that he had brought along with him. So why did they stop? Because um, he is a Celestial Dragon. Potentially might be the reason why. And the next reason I have for you know thinking that and believing that personally is what happened during the Reverie arc. Uh, at the end of Reverie... Uh, not the end of like actual reverie, but at the end of the reverie arc that we saw, uh, the Gruisei are, you know, in their little castle, you know, doing paperwork. And what we know about Marishwa so far is that no pirates are allowed, you know, setting foot in that area. Marines can't even go there unless they're specifically stationed to do something there. Uh, CP0 has, you know, some privileges there because they're like, you know, direct workers for the world nobles. And then you have you know, reverie going on and not even the other noble families of the world, the royal families that are currently ruling over different kingdoms are allowed setting foot in Mariswa. Not even Vivi, who technically I would consider her a pseudo dragon because she she does, you know, she is a descendant of one of the kings. The, the king obviously did not go to uh, Mariswa, so I guess they could brand her as a traitor. But, you know, she's the closest thing to a dragon that will get that's not, you know, born at Marishwa. Um, and even they're not allowed to, you know, go into Marishwa. They're only allowed in that little one area that the fa royal families can stay at. And, you know, mingle and communicate and whatnot. But that's about it. And we have Shanks. Not just a pirate, but a Yonko. One of the four emperors of the sea. Nonchalantly walking in to the Gurusei. And talking with them. And the Gurusei not even batting an eye about it. They're not like saying, they're like, oh, um, uh, why is there a Yonko in here? Um, holy shit. Like, not even, no, just, just so nonchalant. Like, ah, oh, what do you want? And he's just like, I want to talk about a pirate. Like, um, I'm sorry, but a Yonko can't do that. Last time I checked it, I don't see Big Mom or Kaido 
or hell, even Whitebeard when he was alive, walk waltzing into Marijua and talking to the Gura saying, no, um, something ain't sitting right. And th that's why there's a lot of theories like, oh, he's in cahoots with the world government. So, you know, there's possibilities here. Either he's a, you know, celestial dragon, either he's, you know, somehow associated with the with the world government maybe he's an undercover pirate anything is possible so that's that's pretty much the theory <laughs> that's pretty much the video i just wanted to you know get my opinion out there get my words said because i don't know how to you know i don't know if he is a world noble i don't know if he's not a world noble i think he might be a celestial dragon purely based on the fact that he can go to marie and the marine ford war and you know have so much power yet still be a young just being a mere yonko like he's no he's no pirate king he's a yonko um something ain't sitting right there with me you know so again this is a very loose theory obviously and it's a very short video but it's a loose theory because there's so little we know about him and i'm sure once we get more information i will you know make another video about this topic and more depth i suppose but at the moment there's not really much else we can add to this other than you know me just making this video and hearing your guys' opinions do you guys think that shanks is a celestial dragon do you guys think shanks is a nobody do you think he's uh more there's more to him than meets the eye i think he's a world noble a celestial dragon uh who knows maybe he's even m sama's kid you never know you never know maybe he is m sama and i'm kidding that's just that's ridiculous that's out there that's no way that's true but yeah, no, if you guys liked the video, leave a like, subscribe, and as always, I hope you guys have a great day or night wherever you guys are in the world, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.